Welcome to SVG TV News for Wednesday, October 18, 2017. I am Rochelle Batiz with the details. With more than double the cruise ship, the cruise ship passengers expected to come to these shores for this cruise season. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez is calling on the private sector to capitalize on the opportunities. Speaking at a media conference on Tuesday, BM Gonzalez outlined that some 270,000 passengers are expected to visit SVG, which is twice as much visitors in 2016 and 2015. The Prime Minister also said this is an opportunity for business persons to fill in the gap to accommodate the needs of cruise passengers. Approximately 270,000 cruise ship passengers coming in as from the 26th of this month through to the through to the, four, the 14th of April next year. Um, this is roughly twice of those who came last year and over 2015, 2015 was under 100,000, 85, 90,000 passengers. So we, we, we have um, We've seen a ramping up. In fact, we could even have more ships with more passengers as a consequence of some of the, because of some of the disaster which has befallen some of the other countries. The Prime Minister further noted that there are plans in place to have the Argyle International Airport become a transit point for passengers after their cruise. Next year, for instance, they're talking about having St. Vincent in discussions, or having mainland St. Vincent being a, a transit port in which Argyle International would also come into play. I, I mean, the way it would work simply is that if you have a 14 day cruise, you're not going to find people doing 14 days, people coming out of, say, the UK. You'll do seven days. The seventh day, you finish in Kingston. And you go to Argyle and catch the charter flights from the the, the the cruise ship companies going back to the UK but the flights also will bring passengers to take the vessel here so you, you, you have a few of those um, so there would be we, 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 we have to move more assiduously to embrace what is on the horizon. We see already this doubling of the numbers would put a strain even on the existing system that you have, the existing capacity. And the Prime Minister gave the assurance that the Peters Hope Hotel project will be a reality. The Prime Minister said that the investors are in the process of getting an architect and looking at designs to fit the landscape at the North Leeward site. Building land was in license with conditions. I explained all this, you know. No, you don't begin to build something with, four, with, with 160 villas and do a 200 room hotel. You don't, you don't start that just like that. You have to do designs. And what I've been advised is that they have done designs in respect of the, the villas, the prototype villas. And they are working with local architects. In fact, I've been advised that they had concepts from local architects, at least a local architect, and a regional architect in relation to the hotel and they have had discussions about how they take different aspects of those 
two designs, two sets of designs, and see the one which they can come up with. And I believe that they have, this is just the concept, I believe that they have, they have either hired already or about to hire the local architect. The Prime Minister also stated that the requisite paperwork is being finalized to ensure uh, that planning approves the project. Those designs to physical planning. And physical planning would, they will have to have all the requisites, not just the nature of the designs themselves, but also the, 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 how do you deal with wastewater, what, you, how you, what is your sewage system like, water and electricity, and uh, all, all the things that if you build in a, a house, or if you build, and you have a big project, and this one of course is a big project. People don't pause and say, these are people who bought lands <coughs> for seven million dollars or seven million plus, they would have invested. But they had to pay lawyers, they had to pay land land ruling license, they had to pay transfer tax. Over the next three months, local farmers through the national mobilization of cooperatives will be tripling up on crop production. That's according to Minister of Agriculture, Sabota Caesar, as he spoke today at a handing over ceremony of a donation made by the Taiwanese embassy uh, to the farmers' cooperative. Minister Caesar, along with president of the South Central Windward Producers Cooperative, Deniston Douglas, thanked the Taiwanese ambassador, Bo Shang Zhe, for the donation of an Acer computer, which he said will assist in the operation of the farmers' cooperative. The agriculture minister said that the increase in food production is also part of an OCS initiative to reduce the food import bill. It is very important that as we approach the issue of diversification, that we work with the cooperatives to address the issue of the factors of production, land, labor, and capital. Over the next three months, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we are going to have a national mobilization of all the cooperatives. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is poised to in the next year and a half to exhibit and to push for our stakeholders and particularly the producers to triple our production. However, this has to be done in a very organized manner. Minister Caesar called on farmers to follow the lead of the cooperatives and engage in the activities organized to improve food production here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I want to say to our farmers, there's a very bright future ahead in agriculture. However, we have to be organized. It is very important that farmers attend meetings, farmers be ready and willing to join cooperatives, farmers be ready and willing to participate in activities held by the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Cooperatives, and to look at agriculture not only from a narrow nationalistic standpoint but from a sub-regional standpoint since we are all regionalists and should be in this fight to advance the agricultural sectors. In other news, Vice President of the Opposition New Democratic Party, Sinclair Leacock, believes that a leader of any nation has the responsibility to ensure that crime is curtailed. Leacock, who was on Nice Radio today, advocated the need for the NDP's spiritual and social redemption uh, charter and said that it was unfortunate that the ruling Unity Labour Party did not debate the document which was presented by the opposition into 
2003. The MP for Central Kingston said that the charter advocates preventative measures by encouraging youth to be involved in positive groups such as the cadets and scouts. Responsibility of any Minister of National Security, and there's probably speaking greater detail about that later on, and Prime Minister to make sure that the citizens of the country live in peace and quiet and in harmony and without discord. Um, but I say that even while recognizing we will always have criminal elements within our societies. But it's our job to contain them and to restrict them. How we do that is, is the big question being asked. People are asking whether they are short-term measures. People are asking whether they are medium to long-term measures. Dr. Friday has commented on all of them, the short, the medium, and, and, and the long-term. The truth of the matter, um, the, 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 the NDP is well founded in the fact that had the Spiritual Redemption Charter of since 2003. Um, being, being adopted, um, what is now being asked for for um, shorter measures would already be manifesting and bearing mm -hmm. fruits. So we perhaps have missed an opportunity to have done correction at source and at the foundation of many of the things that are manifesting themselves now. Vincentian Zaroj to show solidarity to the government and people of the Republic of Cuba. Making the appeal as the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Cuba Friendship Society, the society notes that Cuba suffered tremendous damage from the passing of Hurricane Irma, but damage to other Eastern Caribbean islands by both Irma and Hurricane Maria, as well as the traditional bias of the international media towards Cuba, has over overshadowed Cuba's own devastation. In the media statement, uh, the society's president, Renrick Rose, uh, said in spite of its own damages, Cuba has been in the forefront of rendering assistance to hurricane-hit islands, including St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and that now is a time for Vincentians to extend the same solidarity to the people of Cuba as they try to recover from their disaster. Rose said the SVG Cuba Friendship Society has set up a Cuba Hurricane Relief Fund at the Bank of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, account number 130016. That's account number 130016. The society appeals to Vincentians, particularly graduates of Cuban universities, parents and relatives of Vincentians, studying their beneficiaries of Cuban assistance in the health field and the general public who have benefited directly or indirectly to contribute to this fund and so demonstrate solidarity, generosity and gratitude to the government and people of Cuba. Calypso music should not just be heard during the carnival season. That's according to Kingsley Hero Roberts as he spoke at a media conference earlier today highlighting plans by the National Calypsonians Association to ensure ensure that Calypso is heard throughout the year. Robert said one such activity is in the form of a show called the Calypso Week. As some people think it's just during certain time of the year and, and we know much better than that. You know, um, that is not the way Calypso should be going. Calypso is an all year round thing. That's how we look at it. Um, we have things in place that we can do so, that we can carry it all year round. We have a ban in place, which is very important. With the Calypsonia and the ban, we can work right through the year. I think that's the problem that we had for years, and I think other tents are facing that same problem. Um, but we happen to pave the way, so we have something in place that can take us all through the year. So we can keep working and spread the message of Calypso right through the year. The Graduates Calypso Tent will be presenting a show called Calypso Week. This show is the first of its kind. It's, it's a show that we are paying tribute to Calypsonians who gone to the Great Beyond some great calypsos of the past. Roberts took the opportunity to highlight some of the calypsonians who will be taking part in the show. This is graduate's idea, this is graduate show, but it's a calypso show. So it's not just calypsonians from the graduate's calypso tent will be performing that show. Right, so I just want to mention that. Uh, we have the ABC of Calypso, Alston Beckett Cyrus. We have Grantley Hyper Constance, you see just step in the door there. You have Da Vinci, 
you have Lexi, you have Sully, you have myself, you have Chowali, you have Hans John, sorry. Oh, the same thing, Hans John, sorry. You have Luther, you have Lord of Mercy, you have Patches, which is right next to me here, you have Johnny P, Johnny Rebel, you have Godfrey Dublin, you have Sharika, you have John Christopher, Vibrating Skates, I don't want to miss any names. I think we, those are all the names. We have at least 18 persons on the cast. We also have the, the backup band, which is blazing, oh, Sunblaze, sorry. The backup band, which is blazing fire. The tent leader of the graduates, Calypso Tent, further added that the aim of the show is to rekindle a festive atmosphere which was once associated with the Calypso art form. So I'm, I just want to, you know, make sure the general public knows what's going on. I mean, the, it's, it's already on, on various radio stations. As we get closer, the news will spread further. Um, that's our plan, you know. Um, but, but look forward for great fun, laughter. We want a party atmosphere, not the usual. This is not something, it's not a competition, it's a show. We want to bring back that atmosphere that we used to have a long time at, at, at the, the, the Lyric Cinema. You know, that party, fun, you know, laughter atmosphere. So I just want to say once again, thanks very much for being here, for the opportunity, opportunity from the um, um, Calypsonian Association for inviting the graduates to be a part of this press conference. Thank you very much. And President of the SVG Calypsonians Association, Earl Cabot Bennett, said more must be done to honor the stalwarts and stakeholders who have made contributions to the Calypso art form here. Bennett stated that one must show a deep level of appreciation for such persons while they are still alive and highlight plans for an annual event to do just that. I want to say to you that recognition is something that we're not good at in St. Vincent Grandines. We are good at eulogizing, meaning when people are dead and gone, we say all the best things about them. When they can't hear us, when they can't feel the love, when they don't feel appreciated, we have to fix that. And we are going to explore the possibility of having an annual award ceremony where we're going to honor and recognize our stalwarts. Not only the Calypsonians, but personal administration, sponsors, you the press. Without you, we will not be able to evangelize. We will not be able to get our message far and wide. And I want to thank Nice Radio, NBC, SBTV, Vincentian, and the news for being here. This is a good representative sample. Very, very good. We have one TV two radio stations, two weeklies, and we know you will help us to get the message out. Bennett said one of the stalwarts is Ainsley Primus, who has made his contribution to the art form in the diaspora. Ainsley is truly a stalwart. He has given human service to the Calypso art form, and he has, he has helped in no small form to keep it alive in New York. Just recently, in, in fact, in September, he was honored by the Diaspora Committee in New York, Chris Arm um, Cavusa, which is the cultural arm of the Diaspora Committee. And then on the, that happened on the 16th of September. And then on the 8th of October, he was also honored by another Vincentian group named VINCI. That acronym stands for Vincentian Independent Charities Incorporated. So you can see this is a man of no small measure. He's a man, in my eyes, is a hero. A hero to Calypso, a hero to culture, and from the bottom of my heart, I extend sincere gratitude and wish him all the best in his future en endeavors. Some of St. Vincent and the Grenadines' most talented entrepreneurs are preparing to showcase their products and services at Invest SVG's inaugural Everything Vinci Expo 2017. The expo will run over the Independence Weekend from October 27th to the 29th at the E.T. Joshua Airport site in Arnosville and is designed to increase the visibility of local 
local businesses as part of an overarching buy local campaign. This initiative fits perfectly in line with one of the investment agency's mandates of assisting in the advancement of export development in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Exhibitors will also be taking part in a workshop training sessions on October the 24th and the 25th at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs conference room. And representatives of various community groups and organizations uh, from around the country involved in staging Christmas and night mornings activities will gather this Saturday, October 21st from 9.30 a.m. at the Peace Memorial Hall as the SVG Nine Mornings Committee begins preparations for the 2017 festivities. The agenda for Saturday's meeting includes a comprehensive review of the 2016 festivities, community reports, improved programming in the festival, and the official launch of two innovative competitions for 2017. In attendance will be officials from the Ministry of Culture and the SVG Nine Mornings Committee. Minister of Culture Cecil Mackey is expected to address the gathering. The SVG Christmas Nine Mornings Festival, which takes place throughout the month of December, will be officially launched on Sunday, December 3rd, with a street parade Christmas concert. And lighting of Heritage Square and climax with the nine mornings festivities from the 16th to the 24th of December. The nine mornings committee says already a number of villages have begun organizing activities for the 2017 season. Nine mornings is one of the leading festivals here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines with activities spread throughout the country. Point Village is the defending national lighting champion, stops one the best nine mornings community while Richland Park won the best Christmas community award.